Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast with me, Joe Redmond. A little bit later than usual, but it always is on Fridays, but it ended up being a little later than I even anticipated it to be on Friday. So much so, it's even dark in here now, as you can see. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a good job that I did it a little bit later as well, to be fair, because around four o'clock today... Burnley announced, when I say today, I mean Friday, obviously, but Burnley announced their third signing in as many days when they announced Vasklav Hladke came in from Ipswich. I say from Ipswich, he's not actually from, he, he was released by Ipswich at the end of the season. Even though they wanted to keep him, he turned down their contract, but we'll get into that. Uh, he signed today, the club announced it at four o'clock, like I said, and they said on Twitter, we are pleased to announce the signing of experienced goalkeeper Vlasklav Haladke on a two-year deal. The 33-year-old joins the Clarets on a free transfer after the Czech's contract with newly promoted Ipswich Town expired this summer. Uh, some nice quotes again on the website, and he went on to say that... Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be here and get all the paperwork done. I've heard a lot of things about Burnley and I'm well aware of this club. It's got great history and unbelievable fan base and I knew it was the place for me. I'm excited to get out and train today. I feel really well and I'm ready to get out there. It's Always good to hear him, hear the signings come in and, and say these positive things. I know they're not going to say anything negative, so some people probably think, why do I even bother reading them out? But I think it's always telling, um, especially with Muric, as like I said yesterday when he was set, mentioned the Premier League in his quotes to Ipswich. So I think that told a lot as to why he left. He wanted that chance. But it's interesting with Las Clav because even though I was told that this might take a while to get over the line due to agents being silly, so they are right, not everything you, you hear on Turfcast is true, because that's exactly what I said two days ago, and here he is now. Um, I was originally told that he would be coming in as number two, but after doing more research on him and stuff, like I, I, I already watched him and I already knew he was a pretty decent goalkeeper and I was aware of him, but after doing a bit more research, I'm pretty I would be happy if he was number one put it this way but uh, from a conversation I had previously I think the intention is him coming in as number two but it's interesting because I actually spoke to an Ipswich fan today because when they signed Muric he asked me to do a video for him and, uh, and speak about Muric so I asked him today what he thought of Vasklav and he said excellent with his feet started a lot of our goals last season with playing out very cool and composed on the ball shot stopping he has the ability to make some absolute world-class staves instinctively but there was towards the end of the season a few goals that a top class keeper would save he was second choice originally but Walton got injured last pre-season and then he came in and had the season of his life so it's interesting Ipswich actually wanted to keep him they offered him a new deal he turned it down. I believe we've offered him better terms than what Ipswich had offered. I'm not sure whether they intended him having a number one or number two. I don't know that. But then there was reports a few days ago that he actually turned us down to go to the Czech Republic and, and play for a club over there. That potentially, looking back now, was probably just agent talk to try and get Burnley to get it sorted. But I guess we'll probably never know. But it's interesting. I believe from a conversation I've had that he, he, the original plan with this guy was to bring him in as number two, but I'd be more than happy if he's number one. And and I still expect Trafford to leave and I still expect him to go and I still expect it, us to then sign a new keeper who may then come in to be the number one. But when Parker watches them both in training, who knows, that may or may not change. It's obviously not set in stone who's going to be number one and number two yet, especially when we don't have the number one. I know, there's, like I said, I've had a conversation with somebody and I, obviously other people are having these conversations because I've seen a lot of people saying the same thing on Twitter. Nothing set in stone. I think that is the original plan, but we'll see. But from what I've heard and from what I've seen in bits, because I, like I said, it's, it's good that I actually know something about this player for a start, because the last few that we've signed, they didn't have a clue on, but this time I actually do know that he is a good goalkeeper. Obviously, I don't watch Ipswich every week, I never would never confess to, I did watch a couple of the games last season and I always felt that he was a decent ball-playing goalkeeper, um, but it's good to, to hear the Ipswich fans say that as well, but yeah. Happy with that, especially on a free. So we've got rid of Murich for, depending on what report you read, somewhere between eight and £15 million pounds and got in a goalkeeper of a similar mould, just albeit a little bit older. But yeah, very happy with this goalkeeper coming in and a very good bit of business from Burnley Football Club. Now, in terms of rumours, again, 
not too much out there uh, today. I did see one thing from a very, very, very credible source over in Turkey is that Fenerbahce are interested in Sander Burge and have asked about the midfielder's current situation. Now, of course, Jose Mourinho is the manager at Fenerbahce at the minute, so that could be a bit of a pull, but it, it, it's Turkey. I mean, I, I have no issue with this source at all. I fully believe Fenerbahce have asked maybe Sander's agent, something like that, just to get more information on it and to show their interest. But he's, he's not going to go to Turkey. Like They can show as much interest as they want Sanderberg when he leaves Burnley, which I still suspect he will. That's not ITK or anything like that. I just It's just common sense. He's a very good footballer and deserves to be in the Premier League. And I think that's exactly where he'll end up. I think he'll go to the Premier League. I think he'll go to a club that could be knocking on, on European doors, maybe. That's how highly I rate him. And I do think these sort of clubs will be looking at him. But I know Fenerbahce are... Are they in the Champions League this season? I don't know. I don't pay attention to the to the Turkish Super League, but they're obviously a club with a lot of history, a lot of you know Champions League appearances down the years and stuff like that. But but still, I think I think I saw somebody say on Twitter that uh, the record transfer fee. Don't quote me on this one if it's wrong. It's straight from Twitter. I haven't even researched this, but the record transfer fee for the Turkish league is 15 million quid, and that's not going to be enough for Sanderberg, in my opinion. We are going to need more than that for us to to let him go out there. I just I just don't think they have the money. I don't think that they can afford him. Um, so, yeah. Do I think he stays? No, I do think he ends up going. But we might end up... It might end up dragging on a bit, this one, because there's been no massive, you know, decent sources of him potentially leaving. I've seen some rumours of Wolves. I haven't seen anything reported properly on that just yet. Um, and I've asked the question myself and got nothing back. So it's interesting. I do think Sander will leave. We might even get a few games out of him at the start of the season. He's obviously here for pre-season. He's not kicking up a fuss like some of the others have, and he's turning up to training. He's he's putting the work in, which is always the best thing to do, in my opinion, because even if you want to leave, you don't want to be sat at home eating Big Macs all the time, do you? You want to be training and keeping your fitness levels high. Uh, and it's a good... shows his professionalism, does Sander. I like Sander. He's a very good player, and it seems like... I've never met him, but he seems like a very nice man who's got his head screwed on. But, yeah, reports in Turkey suggesting Fenerbahce are interested, but I can't see it getting any further than that. Just one more thing. Scott Twine has reportedly scored a hat-trick in a training gate, well, a friendly against Barnsley. And I think it's been blown out of proportion this a little bit because everyone's going mad for Scott Twine at the minute. And don't get me wrong, I I, I would, I think I'd want to keep him and give him a run as a bit part player in the Championship. But from what I've been told, it wasn't a traditional run-of-the-mill friendly. Like, obviously, it was behind closed doors. But from what I've been told, it was kind of more like a training session against Barnsley players where they brought their lads it was it was strewn over two pitches so there were some people playing like 30 minutes at a time on one pitch and then coming off and having a rest for 30 minutes and playing another 30 minutes on another pitch so it's interesting it's good that he's is is showing grit and desire and determination in these friendlies and scoring three goals He's obviously only going to enhance his chances of uh, of staying at the club and only going to make Scott Parker think, yeah, this kid can play. And I do think he can have a role to play. He's two years older than the last time we were in the Championship, two years more experienced, and he was OK the last time we were in the Championship. And now he should be better. So if he is better, I think he can, I think he can play for us this season. Maybe not, like I said, starting every single game because uh, it's, it's, it's tough in the Championship and he's, and he's not... His injury record, he does tend to miss a few games here and there. But I would susp- I would like him to stay, if I'm being honest with you. But yeah, a lot of people have been asking about the score as well, and I don't think there's a score, because like I said, it was two different games across two pitches. Like, for example, I'm not saying this is legit, but Scott could have scored one goal on one pitch, another on another pitch, and then one on the pitch when he went back on it later on. I don't know how it worked out, but that's why there's no score floating around, because it was more of a, a training exercise against Barnsley. But yeah, it's good that he's, he's, he's getting the goals in these friendlies, whether it be a training exercise or not, but it wasn't a traditional type of friendly where he's played like 75 minutes and scored all three goals in a 3-0 win. It's more of a training exercise. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for today. We'll be back on Monday. I do just want to say one final thing, some Turfcast news. The Clarets Daily News podcast is now available on all normal 
podcast platforms, your Spotify's, your Apples. I believe Google Play don't exist anymore. Someone, um, you know, hit me up on that. Let me know whether or not you can find it or what people on Android devices use these days. I've always been a bit of an Apple guy, so I'm, I'm not really sure. But according to Acast, it doesn't exist anymore. So interesting. Let me know anyway. If you can't find it on your device, let me know. But I will put a link in the description. And I, all you need to do is click that link. And I'll tweet it every day as well. But all you need to do is click that link and go to the homepage of the podcast on your preferred streaming platform and click subscribe. And then you don't even need to click my link every time I tweet it every day. Every single morning, it will drop into your inbox. So all you have to do is download it and listen to it on your commute to work, university, college, or even if you're just doing some chores at home. Or you might still want to keep watching us on YouTube with your morning coffee or whatever, and that's fine as well. But yeah, Claret's Daily News, your brand new Daily Burnley podcast, the only Daily Burnley po- weekday, the only Daily Burnley podcast there is out there is now available on all your preferred podcast platforms. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know what you think of Vaslav as well, because I have seen a few, mainly positive, if I'm honest, and just one person giving it the big one on Twitter about how it's a terrible sign in utter nonsense. But let me know what you think in the comments below of him, whether he's number one or number two. Would you like to see him be number... If, even if he's, if he's coming in as number one, I'm, uh, sorry, as number two, I'm very excited to see who we get as number one. But he's more than capable. Uh, Sanderberg, like I said, I've mentioned it in here and I tweeted it as well. But let me know what you think. But I just, I just cannot see it happening. And of course, the friendly as well. Hopefully, we get more reports on some of the friendly scores as well, because we have quite a few behind closed doors ones. Which I've said my bit on it. I still think it's a shame. I'd like to see the lads in action a little bit more. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks everyone for listening. I can see that now. I can say that now every single day. Um, and we'll be back on Monday. Thank you